off stage in a beautiful September afternoon in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, on the mall. Sitting across from Snooky Young, Eugene Snooky Young. That's correct. That's and correct. Good to see you. Good I to am. See you, Ray. I've only seen you from a distance, and when you, particularly I was introduced to you by, oh, just a very happy circumstance. You were with Jimmy Lunsford's band, and I could hear you hitting those uh, <laughs> above high C's oh, uh, in the Lunsford you, uh, brass section. That was that was my favorite, my first big band, and it, was, it happens to be my favorite band that I ever played with. And I played with many bands, but Lunsford is, is most lingering in my mind is that, is that great band. It, it is embedded in my mind, and I hear compositions like Swingin' on Sea, I hear uh, Chopin's Prelude, mm -hmm. and I hear uh, mm -hmm. so many haunting themes that were so originally first edition with that band. Uh, what, which, which compositions did you uh, enjoy playing? Well, there was many tunes I enjoyed playing. I had a lot of solos in that band at the time. Also, I was also playing lead. But uh, let me see. Oh, I used to love the Down by the Old Mill Stream, Annie Laurie, and and there was one Lonesome Road. And uh, oh, these were just great Lunsford tunes. You remember these tunes? There's some of his big things, Tame What You Do, and For Dancers Only. And, Oh, I could go on because there's many tunes in that book that I just loved. Uh, there's never been a book like it since, I say, and what do you say? I have to agree with that. I will have to agree with that. Uh, I've never played a book that was more enjoyable playing than that book. I, I played with the Basies. Uh, I can't say nothing about Basie because that was a great swing of man. It was about the most swingingest band I believe we've ever had. But uh, Lunsford was, it was just something about it. Maybe it was because my, it was my first band that I played in, and it lingered in my mind so much. Maybe that could be the reason. How old were you at the time that you joined that band? When I joined that band, I was 19 years old. Uh, 19. Uh, yeah. That's right, Herb. I was 19. That was Herb Ellis calling me jive. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 there's something about the way that band must have rehearsed that was... Um, perhaps different from other bands? Yeah, it was. It was different than any band I ever played because we re used to rehearse sectionally, and I guess other bands did that too, but uh, uh, we used to work together in a section, and then we would get together and put it together. Then uh, Willie Smith was very good at rehearsing a band, and, and so I think he was more or less the you know, the, the driving force in that band, I really would say that. When you joined that band, uh, you uh, were chosen because you had a skill, and uh, that, that probably is, uh, goes without saying. You're 19 years old, and here are these veteran people around you. You have that reed section with Joe Thomas and Willie Smith, and uh, let's see, Paul Webster sitting next to you, and people like that. Uh, well, when I went in that band, I. I wanted to be a, you know, a Roy Eldridge or a Louis Armstrong type of guy, but I guess I played good first or something, so I never got to really pursue what I had in mind, because I wanted to be one of those guys, you know, but I wanted to be a lead trumpet player, so I can't complain, because uh, I, I made some goal anyway, you know, but I didn't do what I wanted to do. I wanted to be like Roy and Louis and dizzy in those guys but see everybody can be a jazz man in other words you got to be they need lead trumpet players also so that's what happened with me i suppose that uh, comes under the heading of section hand in a way yes yes one but not once a section hand always a section hand what do you mean by that <laughs> well see, you you are a one exciting soloist you know oh, and you stand out i see what you mean well thank you very much that's a wonderful compliment but I'm still working at that, I really am, because I'm, I'm kind of nervous when I get up to play solos and things, uh, because it, it wasn't really my bag. For years, I was, the other guys did it, you see, and so I had it in the back of my mind. I wanted to do it, but uh, I guess maybe it's like uh, another dream coming true way down the line, because when you're working with guys like Joe Newman and, and uh, Thad Jones and Sweets and Buck Clayton and 
I could go on and name the soloists in the other bands that were the soloists, and I had to play lead for the guys, you see. So I wasn't unhappy doing that, though, by no means, because I loved playing lead trumpet. Well, either Basie or, or uh, Lunsford's band, you had to be the skyrocket, the 4th of July color that made that... Uh, I can remember, you know, if the band uh, opened at 9 o'clock, Lunsford or Basie, uh, on an occasion, it just was... With Lunsford particularly, it was an explosion going straight up. It was nuclear. Yeah, well, you would have to be ready for that first show, I tell you that. You couldn't just walk in and pick up your horn and play. You did warm up then? Oh, yes. And I still use a lot of time in warming up. I mean, that's a mistake a lot of trumpet players make if they don't do it. I mean, give yourself a fair chance. You know, it's, a, it's still muscle, you know, just like a fighter or a runner or something. You've got to be real, really warmed up before you can go in there and run or fight or do anything. You have to do the same thing with that trumpet, especially playing lead trumpet, if you want to be accurate and on top of it. Centered and focused. That's right. That's exactly right, Ray. Lay. Snooky Young, Eugene Snooky Young, it's good talking with you and just to get a flavor of what it was like working on the Lunsford Band, just in, in so many words or less to sum this up, I wonder what it was like to be in, the, in your shoes in that section at 19 years of age. Well, it was a very frightening thing when I first went in that band. Fuck, I joined the band in Washington, D.C., and, and Lunsford told me to go out front and, and listen to the, the show before I went on stage. And I went out front and I listened to it, that some of the tunes that you mentioned, Chopin's Prelude and Sonata Pathetique, and he was playing those numbers on the stage, and when I walked out of the theater and went back outside, I threw up. <laughs> I was so nervous. Well, you can understand what I'm saying. So it was a great thrill playing with that band once I got to be a full-fledged member because it didn't take me too long because the guys all treated me so well and they just brought me out under their wing, Trummy and Willie and Jimmy Crawford and this Dan Grissom and all the guys. They were so great to me. They treated me like a kid brother. So that's what pulled me along. Well, in this blue afterglow, Wham, rebop, the boom, bam. It's good to see you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Leah. And I appreciate your interview. Thank you. <laughs>